This type of mount that you see here is called a German equatorial mount. There is a few steps you need to go through if you want to set this up correctly. And in this video, I'm going to walk you through it step by step, what you need to do, what you need to be careful about to set this up and get this tracking as accurately as you can. The first order of business, of course, is your tripod. First, you're going to just quite simply extend the legs. I always recommend you extend the legs. It does provide additional stability. So get those legs extended all the way out. Next, you're going to be locating the north position on your mount because you can't just put this down in any orientation. For me, this little notch that you can see here, that's my north marker. That's the one that's going to be pointing north for me. It might be different for your mount. Maybe there's some uh, symbol on one of the legs. Usually one of the legs have to point towards north. Try to figure that out for your specific mount. Maybe if you have a fancy mount, you don't actually have a north marker because you can rotate the head on it. But for me, I need to point this north. It is in that direction. So I am going to get this positioned. Make sure the legs are fully extended. Something like that. For now, we're just uh, pointing it approximately north. We're gonna fine tune this later. The next step is to get the mount itself. And what you will see on the base of the mount here is likely you will see two screws here on either side. That's used for adjusting what's called your azimuth. Those two screws in the middle have to go around the little peg there in the, that we have on the mount. So in order to make that easier, I recommend you just open these up a little bit on both sides so that there's enough clearance in here between the screws that you're not going to be riding on the top of that, but it can easily slide in between the screws. So we are just going to place this down like so. And then underneath the mount, you should have a some kind of screw that you could screw this in. Screw this in as tight as you can. And um, again, don't over tighten it. Don't need to use a lot of force. There we go. Just, you know, finger tight. If you have a center plate as I have here, I have to attach mine afterwards. Maybe you can do that earlier in the night or earlier in the setup process, but I just need to tighten that in now, like so, just to keep that um, nice and centered there. We can now go ahead and just tighten these in. Again, we just tighten them in for now. We're gonna adjust all this later. Next, we're going to get the counterweight rod, and this should just screw into one side of the mount here. Once you've done that, we can now attach the counterweight. And now you need to be careful. Out here on the end of the counterweight rod, there will be a screw that you have to unscrew completely. If you're doing this during the night, be careful. You don't drop this because this is quite important. This is a stop screw that prevents the counterweight rod from folding off. Now, different types of counterweights have different mechanisms, but as you might be able to see inside the counterweight here, there is a drop pin and we need to that if, you, that if you point that downwards, that should disappear and there should be a handle here where you can basically unscrew this. We can go ahead and slide this on. And here comes an important thing. When you're sliding this on, keep an eye on where your feet are. It's all too common that people keep your feet out here and these are heavy and without this stopping screw, these will slide right off. And you would not be the first who gets a broken foot from dropping one of these counterweights. So I always recommend standing behind it here, slide this up like so, and then with the screw that you saw on here, we're going to lock this in there. Now we can put the stop screw back in while keeping a hand on the counterweight so that it doesn't slide down and hit our hand. And now when that is screwed in, we secure. Should this for some reason slip on the, uh, on the counterweight rod, it's not gonna fall off. Um, and that's gonna save you a broken foot. So for now, we're just gonna slide this all the way up and lock that in. So now you're actually ready to do your polar alignment. Now, obviously we can't do that. It's cloudy and it's in the middle of the day, but you would do this during the night. If you're using an ASI Air, you can do this polar alignment step later, but if you're not, I recommend you actually do it now. The goal here is to have the axis that runs through here, through the mount, point that at the celestial pole, which is right around the North Star. What I would usually do is I would remove this down here. Your mount, depending on what type of mount it is, may not have, this is called a polar scope, where you can look through the mount here. You can see whether you're pointing in the right direction. But your mount may be different. Maybe you don't have this. Um, if you have it, I usually have you just put a laser pointer through it 
and then the laser pointer will come up out here on the top and I can then manually move my mount around, move the tripod and all that to try and get that pointed to, toward the North Star as accurately as possible. If your mount does not have a polar scope, then you can just usually you would have here on the side. I don't know if this one has, it actually has. You can usually see your uh, latitude um, over here on one side. So adjust that to whatever latitude you're at and then just try to point this as accurately north as you can. We're going to try to fine tune, um, fine tune this later. If you do have a polar scope, it's quite common. You will see this little, this is essentially just a small little red light that's sitting here on the side. Let's see if I can get that out. Oh, that's a little stuck. There we go. This is just a small little red light. Just a little red LED in there. That will just light up the little pattern that we're going to talk about in a minute in here that you use for, for polar alignment. So normally now would be the time when you would turn that on and um, lock that and turn it off again. Um, and then get ready for the polar alignment by looking into the polar scope. And um, again, I'm going to talk more about that in just a second. Now, if you could see here, it's actually blocked in here, so you can't actually see anything out of it. So if you can't see anything, it's likely because it's blocked in here. So what I have to do is I need to open up this axis by opening up the clutch and then rotating that. Now you can see there it is opened and then I can lock the clutch again. And again, if you are using the mounts built in polar scope to polar line, you need to make sure that this axis up here is also rotated correctly. Again, consult your manual because this might vary from mount to mount. From me, I need to have this rod pointed in such a way that when I'm looking up at the sky, I will see Polaris on, um, on the rod and then the other end of the rod should point out to, to this star right here in the small dipper. Um, so for me, I would have to now go find that star and line up those two stars so that they both lie on the rod. Once I've done that, I could then go ahead and lock that in. And now I will be ready to perform my polar alignment. This is what it's going to look like if you look through the polar scope of this. And again, as I said, this is going to vary from mount to mount what that looks like. And if I orientate everything correctly, I need to put Polaris into this circle right here. Now I can adjust that either by physically turning the tripod if I'm way off, or if I need to do fine adjustments, I can use these two screws here to move it side to side. And I have similar uh, screws here and here on the back that I can use to lift the mount up and down for fine tuning. So I would use those down here to fine tune until Polaris is in the correct location. Now, if you are using a ASI Air, luckily this whole process is a lot easier than we don't have to worry about polar scopes and all that kind of stuff. Because at that point, I would just usually do a rough alignment, just roughly point this north. Um, and then I would use the scope and the ASI Air to do my polar alignment. That's what I usually do. So in that case, I don't have to do all that, align the rod and look through the polar scope and all that. I don't have to do that because that's gonna be done by the ASI Air. So what we're gonna do instead is we are going to mount a telescope on here. But the first thing that you saw me do here was I opened up the two, both of these two axes here so that this whole thing could turn. And on the side here, you will see small arrows. And this indicates the home position for the mount. So I'm just going to align up those arrows like so. And now make sure that those two are both lined up. That means that we are in the, t in the mount's home position and we're ready to begin to attach a scope on here. So I'm just going to open up the two screws here and I'm going to take my telescope and I put that in here. I'm going to be very careful now that I don't drop anything and lock that in. I know approximately where it needs to sit because I've done this so many times now, but Again, this might take some trial and error because we're going to be balancing this whole thing here in just a minute. But what you need to do now is basically get the telescope into a observing ready position where you are ready to basically take images. That means all cameras need to be attached. All wires need to be attached. It basically needs to be ready to take pictures and also take off the front caps of the telescope because in a minute we're going to be balancing this thing. And if you have a heavy cap on the front, then you take it off for taking pictures and suddenly your balance is off and you're not going to get good guiding.
Once everything is connected and we are ready and we remember to remove our caps here at the front, we are now ready to begin to make a balance of this mount. Because the way you do this is you open up these axes one at a time, keep a hand somewhere on your telescope so, so things suddenly sort of move around in unexpected ways. Then you're going to point it horizontally to one side and try to let go. And you can see as I do this, it has a tendency that means I'm too heavy on this side. So that means I need to move this up a little bit. So I'm going to loosen this, move it up and lock that in place again. Let's see if we are closer now. It's still a little heavy on the camera side. Okay, I think we're pretty good. You can see here, I can now, with the, with the clutches here open, I can now let go of the telescope in that position and it's going to stay there. Good test is also to turn it 180, let go, and it should stay in the same position. Now that I've done this, that means that I am pretty much good balanced, at least on this one axis here. So we're gonna return this back to its home position, find those arrows, align them up, and we're now gonna proceed with the um, with the other axis here. So we're going to do the same thing. Turn this 180 until it's, um, until it's the bar here is horizontal. I'm going to open up the lock here on the counterweight and I'm now just going to slide the counterweight. You see now I'm too far out here, I'm too far in. So I'm just going to try to find that balance point where this thing is balanced. Then we're going to lock that in. We're going to perform the same test, move it around see that no matter where it's pointing, I can just let go and the telescope will stay in that position no matter what I do. Once I've done that, now I know I am balanced, so we can go ahead and find that home position. If you found this useful, I would like to invite you to head over to deepspacebook.com and check out my book, The Cosmic Field Guide. These books have all kinds of like tables and graphs that you can look different things up. Um, it's a really nice handbook for astrophotographers, whether you are starting out with a hobby or whether you are more um, more advanced, there are things in here that I'm, I promise you, you will find interesting and, and useful. So check that out on deepspacebooks.com. This is the way I fund this channel instead of running with, um, uh, with a lot of sponsors. I sell this book instead, which is a good way to support a creator more directly. So check it out on deepspacebooks.com. I can set it where I want it to, and now I can click rotate. And if we're lucky, there we go. And we're then going to slide the, um, the, cam the, ca the guide camera in just like halfway to start.